What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? All right, well, we got the season premiere of Love & Hip Hop Miami. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. So y'all know how it is. It's the first episode, so they basically just laying the, the groundwork, giving y'all the updates, let you know what's going on with who and where we are and all that good stuff. So, um, I'll save the major storyline for last. So let's start. Let's talk about DJ Hollywood is back. Well, I don't know if it was DJ Hollywood, the producer that gave Marlon Negro the big the problems last year. He's back. We see him and Gunplay having a conversation, getting caught up or whatever. Gunplay's out of rehab, but him and um, Kiera have broke up. He said that, you know, they were going through a tough time, so he went to the DMs to get some love. He said it never got physical, but he was looking for some attention, and, you know, he knew he'd find it in the DMs. No big deal there. Well, it's a big deal, but no surprise there, I should say. Because the surprise is that one of the chicks he was in the DMs with was Mr. Marla Negra. So, y'all know that's going to come back. Y'all know that's going to be an issue. You know, of course, Hollywood was like, hey, I got my own issues with Lamar. I ain't, I ain't getting in there. I ain't got nothing to do with that, right? So, of course, we jump to a Marla Negra. Now, if you follow her on social media, you know she has blown up. I didn't even think she was going to come back because she has so much going on. But she is back for this season. I'm, I, I feel like she's going to do a Cardi B. She's going to give us a second season and then I think that might be it for her if things continue to go in the direction that they're going. She's got a new manager. Um, we pick up with her performing at New York Fashion Week. And she even said, she said, you know, I, I done blowing up a little bit. I done got a little bougie on the, on the chick. She was like, but nah, I'm for real, for real. You know, I still live in the same house. I still drive the same car. She was like, but I have been able to help take care of my mom a little bit better. Um, she said, and that, um, um, but she doesn't get to go home a lot. She's been on the road a lot, right? But then we see her come off the stage. Her phone's been blowing up. Come to find out her mom had a really bad accident where her mother, um, left a camera, I mean camera, left a candle burning. There was a lot. She woke up. It was a bunch of smoke. And it was just a problem. Her mother, they, they showed pictures that it blistered up really bad. So, of course, Amara goes home to check on her mom. And um, so she's in town for a little while. You know, real, I'm not saying her mother didn't have an accident. I'm just saying it's real convenient that now she can stay in Miami for a little while to tape her scenes for the show. But we're going to let that go. Um, so, I guess her storyline, basically, it looks like Amara got real messy this year, y'all. Because it looks like she's going to have some situation... Not only with the DM with Gunplay, but her and Jesse Wu got some situations going on. So, let's jump to Jesse Wu. Jesse Wu is a comedian. If you follow her again on social media, she's, you know, an Insta Instagram queen. I don't watch a lot of Jesse Wu, but I know who she is. And, you know, one of the things that she talks about a lot is how her mom is, um, you know, an evangelist. She does, she's Haitian. They do, she does the whole accent and everything. She plays off of her culture a lot. Um... I think she's. I think she has her moments. I mean, there are times when I think she's really funny, and there are times when I'm like, mm, okay. Um, she's also singing. You know, she shows her in church, and she's singing, and she's singing, and um, you know, she's talking to her mother. She invited her mama to come to a, um a brunch, a sister's brunch that she was having on Sunday. Her mother said, if you want me to come and stuff, why are you doing on Sunday? You know what I'm doing on Sunday. I said, I know that's right. So, <laughs> um. But so she's on the season. She's on the show this season. Um, then we jump to Prince. Um, we get a little bit more of his background. Um, you know, he said he had a hard life. That you know, his dad was a promoter, and that he was him. And his dad weren't always close. He was in and out of juvie and all that other stuff. Him and his girlfriend still having issues. Him and Bobby are friends. He said that social media really got out there and got him thinking that he, you know, um, talking about him being gay and talking about him and Bobby ain't just, ain't friends, they more than friends, and that, you know, his girlfriend is really just a front and all this other stuff, right? So we got that. That's going to be a little storyline, right? Him and Bobby. Miami Tip done been upgraded, y'all. Look like Miami Tip is a main character this year. Okay, all right. So Miss Miami Tip is there. And so Bobby, we, we see Mr. Bobby. So it seems like the drama with Bobby is going to be him and... Him and Prince's friendship, come to find out JoJo. We'll get to JoJo in a minute. But if you remember JoJo, she was the one who um, had the business and the father and the mother were getting divorced and her father was going to cut her off if she sided with the mom and she did side with the mom. So she said that they cut off. But we'll get to them in a second. Basically, JoJo then told 
Bobby that he thinks that Prince is an opportunist, that the only reason why Prince is hanging around Bobby is because of what Bobby can give him and the exposure because Bobby's sort of blowing up now with the whole show and everything else. And he's talking to Miami Tip like, well, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know if I should listen to JoJo or if, you know, what's really going on. And Tip was like, look, you need to, like, first of all, this dude took a lot of flack being your friend. Like, being your friend ain't easy. You know, he they'd call him all sorts of gay and everything else. So you really need to go chill out somewhere. Um, Bobby was like, well, I know you're right, but I just can't help but, you know, think that maybe it's more to it maybe he really just trying to you know be my friend for what i could do for him or whatever girl boy bye um amara's mom is okay we see her come back to town blah 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 i already talked about that um then we see okay we're gonna come back to trick we're gonna do the whole trick and trina thing at the end because they're they were the major part of this storyline and i feel like since last year Trick and Trina was sort of the anchors of the show that didn't have... We're going to come back to them. I'll, I'll do them last. So we see Miss JoJo and Amara La Negra. Um, they're friends. They're catching up. You know, of course, like I said, she still cut off. Her father still cut her off. Her mom... Excuse me. Her mother and got a job. She's doing real estate now, honey. And they sort of having a little catch-up. But Amara's so pretty. She's just like a baby doll. Anyway, but they're catching up and everything, and she tells, JoJo tells Amara about the whole situation with Bobby and Prince, and she was like, you know, me and Bobby are cool, and I just feel like Prince is using him, and Amara was like, first of all, I don't really fuck with Bobby like that. Like, I'm cool with Prince, but me and Bobby, she was like, because he just got a lot of drama, he just got a lot going on with him, and I just don't really fuck with him like that. She said, but let me tell you something. She gave her some real good advice. She said, don't ever get in between two friends like that. She said, because you're going to always lose whatever's going on between Prince and Bobby, let Prince and Bobby figure it out. Don't give no advice. Don't say nothing because it's going to always be you with them one meddling. It ain't going to never be them. It's going to always be that you meddled and you got in the middle of their situation. And that is the best advice. Let me tell you something. That is some good advice. Stay the hell out of that. That's like boyfriend and girlfriend stuff. Let me tell you something. When my friends call me because their significant other is tripping or they going through something, I listen. I listen. I don't have a whole lot to say. Why? Because they're going to make up tomorrow. And when they make up tomorrow, they're going to remember what you said. I'd never forget one time me and my sister got into an argument. And my sister was like, well, you don't never like anybody I date. I said, because you don't never tell me nothing good about them. Because the only time you call me is when they done fucked up. When they sending you flowers and treating you like a queen, you don't call me and tell me that shit. You call me and tell me the stuff that they did that you don't like. So what am I supposed to do? And from that point forward, I said, you know what? I don't never have another opinion on who you date. I don't care. You like it, I love it. If that's your boo, he mine too. Because you can't win. And she told her, she said, JoJo, stay out there. Bobby and Prince are going to do what Bobby and Prince does. And they stay out of that. And there was some video clip where... Prince took Bobby's hat. Bobby got mad and started chasing him. And then Bobby fell. So then he was embarrassed. And she said he was just crying. And he was real upset over it. First of all, why are you crying? Like, I understand being embarrassed. We done failed. We done done. Honey. But you still mad about it? Anyway. So, then we find out um, later on. Um, Hollywood had given, um, Gunplay advice to go talk to Kiera. Like, if you love her, don't let her go that easy, blah, blah, blah. You know. So, Gunplay goes to talk to Kiera. It don't go too well. She was like, look, I held you down. I was there for you. I always had your back. And what happened? I go through your phone, and I find out you in other women's DMs. And, like, that's, I can't, you know, I, I just only leave so much I could take. And she was like, you know, I feel like, she was like, I feel like, you know, you took my kindness for weakness. Like, I always had your back. I was, I was always there for you. But now, you know, I just feel like you took it for weakness. And I just got to let you know. So, you know, he said, well, I wasn't feeling appreciated. And I just had to get some 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 appreciation. And nothing ever happened between me and those other women. But, you know, I did want to feel, you know, I wanted to feel special. Why men always use that bullshit excuse when they get caught cheating? I wasn't feeling appreciated. The same effort it took for you to dig into somebody's DM is the same effort you could have dug into my text messages and said, baby, let's talk. I don't feel appreciated right now. Anyway. 
So, but that didn't go too well. She, the, end, the conversation ended with her saying, look, I still need some time. I still need some space. And he was like, you know, I love you. I'm going to give her her space right now, but I ain't done. So, you know, I guess that's going to be part of their storyline. And she, okay. So then we see, we had Jessie Wu's um, brunch. And she's got um, Miami tipped there with her mom. And Joy is there. And JoJo's there with her mom. I guess Joy was there with her mom. I didn't quite see that part now i must be honest there was a part of this scene that got cut off so something happened and all i saw was the tail end up with miami tip was like i gotta get up out of here before i fight her so her and jojo must have gotten into it and i don't know what she said smart to, to miami tip but miami tip said let me get up out of here before it get ugly i missed it my dvr was tripping i don't know it blanked out that spot y'all my bad um, but I'm sure whatever it is, it ain't over and I'll figure, find out what happened later on. Or I'll look at somebody else's review whose DVR didn't trip. Excuse me. Um, the other thing we find out is JoJo was now dating Pleasure P. And Joy is like, mm, you know you better watch out for, um, Shay. And, um, JoJo was like, I ain't worried about Shay. Like, me and Shay were never friends. I don't owe her nothing. And I... My thing is, they done, they are broke up, broke, broken, broke in, broke, broke up. I ain't never, other than on a TV show, I ain't never seen nobody have to worry about who the other woman was. Shay and JoJo wasn't nobody's. They weren't friends. They weren't together. They ain't hang out together. Not that I remember. I mean, maybe something happened last year. I don't know. If it happened, I don't remember. But I don't remember them being best friends or nothing like that. And they done been broke up. They broke up before the season was even over last year. Um, and I really don't want Shay, I really don't want that to be her storyline this year. I really don't want her to have another season on a reality show where she chasing behind some nigga. I really hope she got something else going on this year because Shay is a beautiful woman. I don't know her like that, but from Flavor Love to her and Scrappy to last year with her and Pleasure P, I really, really want her to find her own. I just want her to find, I know she was doing the fitness thing or whatever. I really want her to find that and then not be attached to a man. Like, I really do. And that's that's sincere. That's not even on no bullshit. Like, I really, because I hate to see that every time we see her, it's her dealing with a man breaking her heart or her chasing behind some dude. So, please, Shay, I mean, I know the season's already been taped. I know it's already over. But, Shay, please, 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 do not spend this whole season chasing behind this dude. It looked like she's going to have some health issues. So, please don't spend this whole episode, this whole season chasing after that dude. Anyway. All right, so let's get to the main storyline from this season. I mean, from this episode, which I think is going to be a big part of this this season. So, let's talk about it. Trina and Trick. We know last year we left off with them doing the TNT album. Um, remember, there was that trickiness with Trick and uh, Joy, who's his ex-wife. Well, I don't know if they're actually ex-wife now, but at the time, his estranged wife, which is actually Trina's cousin or something to that effect. And how? So that's a little tricky situation right there, no pun intended. So what we see here, this episode, we pick up... That nothing has gone on with the album. Other than that one song that they did, they have made no progress on the album. What Trina's saying is, every time we're supposed to be in the studio, Trick don't never show up. He don't answer my call. He don't pick up the phone. You know, he's no, he's a no-show. And we I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. I don't know what the problem is. The flip side, we see Trick saying, we ain't in the studio because everything she sent me is bullshit. Like, she trying to send me music that our fans don't want to hear. It's not music that they want to hear. It's not what they expect from us. And so, no, we haven't moved forward on the album because I don't like none of the beats that she's sending me. I don't like any of the music that she's sending me. Now, my thing is, why are you not sending her nothing? Like, if you don't like what she's coming up with, why don't you come up with your own shit? The second thing is, that's a conversation that needs to be had, right? Like, you can't... you Anyway. So that's the conflict. And Trina's like, you know, I'm putting, I'm trying to get my album done. I'm putting stuff on hold, trying to get this done first. She said, you know, I got to finish up my album, which she actually did finish up, which I believe she did drop that album. Um, but she was like, you know, I'm really trying to get my, you know, I'm trying not to, you know, because, and she acknowledges, you know, me and Trick got history. He's done a lot for me. I don't want to leave him hanging. I don't want to abandon this project. But at the same time, if you won't even give me the courtesy of picking up the phone when I call you, because we see a scene where he's gambling, she calling him, he sending her the voicemail, she in the studio waiting for him. 
So, at the end of the episode, they're performing. Um, they, it's the anniversary of Take It to the House. I think the 20th anniversary. Ooh, that make me feel old. Anyway, of Take It to the House. And, of course, she tries to talk to Trick before the show to say, look, what's going on with this project? Um, you know, I really want this project to work. I really want us to get, you know, but, but where you, where are you? You like MIA on me and I don't know what's going on. And I'm really ready to abandon the project if you don't want to do it. Well, he starts talking about this ain't the time or the place to have this conversation. And he gets up and he walks off. Well, my thing is this. If you're not answering her phone calls, you're not showing up for studio sessions, she got to get you when she gets you. If this is the first time she's been face-to-face -face with you, the first time she done seen you, that is the time for her to have this conversation because when else is she going to have it? So, I lost my train of thought. My bad. So, um, we see them perform. They go out and she's a, she's a professional. They perform. She does what she's supposed to do. And then after they do their song, she plays her song. She added her one of her new songs into the to the performance. Trick tells the DJ, cut that shit off, and walks on stage. So, of course, she's pissed off. She has blown up. She was like, how dare you? You don't want to make new music with me, and you don't want me to perform my new music. How dare you? disrespect me that way and disrespect my music that way and she goes off she's backstage she's cussing this how you know when shit's real when the producers are on screen when they cut that they cut out what they call it the fourth wall the producers were on screen they you could see the uh, the production assistants running around trina is going off for real and i think at one point trick tries to go talk to her and they're like not right now like give her a minute like don't this ain't the time and she's really going off and then you see her with the, with one of the producers and she's crying like she is really having you know a breakdown and she's like i don't you know i i really am trying like i do everything for everybody but when i need something nobody's there for me you know she was like i can't keep doing this and you can see that she's just really really frustrated and i think she is torn because she does love trick like a brother and she does know and understand what he's done for her in her career and everything but at a certain point what more are you supposed to do for somebody like what more can you do for somebody at a certain point and then even you know when trick was saying um that's not what the fans want to see from us and then you saw her saying people evolve people grow you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and i think that that's a lot of what happens when you have people working in the studio together you want to make sure that you're giving the, the fans what they want. Like, people do want to hear Trick and Trina. We do want to hear that old school Trick and Trina. But we also understand that y'all grown now. Like, y'all not 20 years old anymore. The music shouldn't sound the exact same, right? So, that was pretty much the episode, y'all. We'll see where, um... We'll see what happens. We'll see how this thing plays out. But it was a great first episode. Like I said, they laying the foundation, letting us know where we're going with this thing. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Peace.